Um, we get some time in and you can uh, work with the other, um, some of the other referees. Um, hopefully you do have them at your pool. Um, real important, you do take some of that time because um, it's, uh, it's a little bit more involved taking on the responsibility of a referee, um, but certainly you'll do fine. Um, so we're just going to go through some of the things that you as a referee need to uh, incorporate in your, your skill set because you may be doing double duty on, on some of these uh, meets where you're refereeing and judging. But hopefully, if you're being a referee for the first time, you want to try to let all the other folks do the judging and you just worry about refereeing so you can concentrate on that. Um, I know some people don't like to do that. They like to go ahead and say, oh, well, I, I got to do both. Well, okay, fine. Um, but again, try to, try to work with the veterans and they'll help you move along. Um, so um, we're just going to go through uh, the listing of what we're going to cover tonight here. We're going to cover uh, what the qualifications are, what your responsibilities are, what you need to do before the meet, the pre-meet duties, uh, what's going to happen during the meet, um, and what happens after the meet, and a few other items to cover in there. And then we're going to do a quick uh, open book uh, exam, but it's really just, it's just for fun. We'll talk through it. Okay, so... Um, so your qualifications, um, you have to be at least 19 by the uh, by June 1st. Now that rule is still in place, but keep in mind they're allowing the 19 year olds to dive this year, um, and they're going to have. Um, I know that the league was going to be listing them as exhibition divers going in, and I I believe what the what they're trying to do is say. Uh, they weren't going to count them unless it ends up having the dual meet ends in a tie with, you know, the 15, you know, by the time the 15, 18s are done and the score is tied, then they were going to bring back in the 19 year olds that are there and maybe incorporate their scores. One thing I will tell you as referees, you need to tell all your judges to make sure and remind them they're scoring every diver exactly the same, no matter what the circumstances is, because you don't want to have a situation where you're having to, tell the divers, well, there's an exhibition on the board. You might give some leniency on a score or something like that. We got to stay away from that. We got to make sure that we're, we are telling our judges to score every dive exactly as they see it at all times, play it safe, play it smart. Just let them know that um, you will need to be certified every three years, but after tonight, you're going to be certified for this year, next year, and the year after, you know, through 2023. So you'll be good to go there. Um, you do need to know where those, you need to know the rules, okay? Understand the rules. You don't need to know every, uh, every word in the rule book. It's not necessary. You don't need to do that at all, okay? Um, you, should, uh, you should know where everything is. That's why I say master your knowledge of the rules uh, to the best of your ability, okay? Um, reading it, getting out there and trying to incorporate that, you can even do some practice runs on, okay, I did see a violation. You could always work in front of a mirror or something like that, whatever. You know, picture yourself on how you're going to be making calls and things like that. But we'll talk about that in a moment, okay? But what you do need to do, most important, is that you read in that book. You should know all that stuff or at least know where it is in the book, okay? Got to know where to reference that stuff, okay? So keeping in mind, you as a referee, you are the head official of a meet, Um that does not mean you're the head official of the entire pool. Okay. That means that you're, you're the guy or the gal in charge of that meet, that dive meet, whatever it is, dual meet, divisional meet or whatever. Okay. So you want to set in your mind, no matter what's going on, you may very well have your own child there diving or something, but you got to keep yourself impartial no matter what's going on. Okay. You have good friends with whoever or whatever. You put all the influence or whatever, set them aside. You'd be as impartial all the way through, okay? Now, your pre-meet duties, okay? Before the meet begins, okay? You need to give instructions to the judges. In particular, you want to tell them these particular things. You want to, you want to for, certainly you want to be able to answer their questions, or anything related to the rules, so if they have questions on how stuff is supposed to be called or how you're going to call it, um, anything pertaining to those rules, you want to go over those things, okay? You want to also convey your expectations. 
you know, how you expect things to go to make that meat go as smooth as possible. Okay. You're going to say, Hey, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do, you know, these events, we're going to have a break after, after the 11 12s. Um, or you're going to have the break uh, later. It just depends on the size. You can have a, a whole huge amount of, uh, younger divers and maybe not so many of the older divers. So you may want to move that break to after the nine tens. It's, it's done that way before, but that's okay. You establish the groundwork is what I'm getting at. You decide, you know, with the meat secretary, what's going to be an orderly flow of the meat to make it fair and make it interesting for everybody involved. You want to let everybody know, how are you going to call things? Okay. Are you going to call the balk? You're going to have your hand up. You're going to say, I'm declaring a balk or you just want to let them know you're going to tell the table. My best thing is I use a combination of the both. When they see my hand go up, they know something, we've got an infraction or we got a problem, or we're saying hold up diver or whatever it may be. Having the hand up just to, to stop things and say, hey, I need to make this call or that call or whatever, that's fine. You want to be able to do that, okay? You just need to convey that and let everybody everybody there, not just the judges, but also uh, the announcer and, and, and the meat secretary so they know what's going on. Um, there may be some changes on the dive sheet you have to give instructions on, okay? So the other thing to do is to help hopefully find out, you are gonna have exhibition divers, likely sometimes you don't, and that's fine. Um, you wanna get an idea, you know, who's competing for the team points. Um, don't get too hung up on this. The only reason I bring this up is because it probably would be better to go ahead and try to put exhibition divers to have them go off and do their diving first, especially in the older age groups, because unless they're going to be repeating dives, which you also, you know, judges may see that and say, hey, wait, they just did that dive or something like that, or they may not be doing a full complement of dives. So that way you get an idea and you know, who the exhibition divers are and who aren't, you know, so who's competing for the points and who's not, and that's fine. Um, um, also, you, as a referee, you are not required to look over the dive sheets, but I would say you probably want to go ahead and take a look at them anyways, if you can, or at least look at a few of them, especially when it comes to the older divers who are going to probably do some of the more difficult dives, so you know what's coming. Um, really uh, in particular, like, and they're doing the complicated twisting dives or even some of the other ones with multiple somersaults, things like that. Um, but it's a good, it's a good thing for you as a referee to try to prepare yourself and know what's coming. Um, but the dive sheets, them being signed, filled out correctly, uh, make sure they're accurate. That's on the diver and the coaches. They're the ones who are supposed to make sure that's right. So when they go in there and they start reading off dives that are all wrong or something like that, that's on them. One thing of note with a dive sheet, I will say this. Sometimes you get some new coaches and they screw up. They list all the correct dives and they may be in the wrong order. But if you can catch those things before any diving happens or if a particular dive happens, then you're safe to go ahead and instruct the meet secretary to make changes, but hopefully you don't run into that. Okay. During the meet, you're going to seat yourself as close to the head table as possible. Again, you want to be near, not necessarily where the announcer is, but you also want to know where the meet secretary is. If something comes up. Okay. you you may have problems. You may not have problems and that's okay, but at least you're going to know where people are. That's what's important. So park yourself as close to that head table as you can, um, clearly so you can communicate with the announcer as needed, because if you're calling, make an infraction call, you need to be able to turn as close as you can to the announcer and tell the announcer what's going on, okay? Um, you are always going to have the judges back, and that's why I say you're going to support their scores no matter what. You don't give them any grief. You don't give them any funny looks. You don't let anybody come after the judges for anything. The judges are going to score those, those dives exactly as they see them. And you as a referee have to have their back. Just as the judges are going to have your back and support you doing your job. 
But most important is that you have their back at all times and you support their scores no matter what. Okay. That's how they saw it. That's how they scored it. That's how we live by it. Okay. Um, of course, and also during the meet, um, you got to be able to see those technical violations, if you will. Um, you know, the infractions that come up. You got to make those appropriate calls. Okay. Um, the, um, you know, you're going to give that direction. You're, you're going to be the boss there telling the judges what they can and can't do, making uh, adjustments to their scores. That's going to be, um, you're not going to have them adjust their scores when you're calling a balk. You tell them, you score the dive as you see it. You're going to turn to the announcer and say, so announcer, I'm please. So excited uh, for you. It's very good. I missed it. Nobody was wrong. So excited for you. We'll have to figure everything out. I don't want you to lose these up. Opportunities. These are like amazing, amazing opportunities. Hello. Mute, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so again, you got to be able to recognize those things when we're talking about box. Again, you're going to tell, you're going to tell the um, the judges to score a dive exactly as you see it, and then you'll instruct the announcer to take two points off of each score. Now, if somebody throws up a one and a half. That announcer is only going to call to zero. There's no negative scores here. Okay. That's important. Okay. The, the technical violations could be when you're calling a deficient dive or an unsatisfactory dive. Again, you, you, you can tell a judge to score it as they see it, but if it's a deficient dive, you could say four and a half max, you just let them know that's the most they can give. Or if it's an unsatisfactory dive, you tell them, Two points is all you can give, even though in your mind they did a four or a five. You can only give a two. You make sure you uh, make that clear to them, okay? The correction of errors on the dive sheets. This is, this is rather important here. Um, the question is, can a correction be made? When can it be made? It depends on if it's before or after a dive has been performed, okay? I give you the scenario. You have a dive sheet. And they start reading off the dives and they're just going through the required dives because they're going to do all the required dives first. Okay. And then they're going to, sorry, just my chair again. Um, they're going to go through their required dives. And if you hear something that isn't right, before they do the dive, you can say, okay, you look at the dive sheet, and if you see all the correct dives are in there, but they're in the wrong order, you can instruct the meat secretary to go ahead and fix that dive sheet, get them in the correct order. No harm, no foul. Then you have the dive, the diver proceed, and that's fine. The prop you run into is if the dive gets announced, and it's in the wrong order, and especially in a required dive, and the diver performs the dive and does the wrong dive where there were supposed to be in particular, like, for example, if you're, you're doing the 15, 18s, their third dive is supposed to be an inward dive in whatever position they choose. They got to do a 401 and they screw up and do one of their twisting dives as their third dive. They get up there and they do that twisting dive or whatever it may be, or they decide to do something else, say a, a 203 or something, okay? They were supposed to do that inward dive as their third dive. They've done the incorrect dive. So what ends up happening after they've done their dive, that third dive, which is supposed to be the inward, has now failed. You're going to instruct the meat secretary to fix the balance of the sheet because they still got three more dives to do. And that next dive may be that fourth dive, which they just did, they're going to have to go ahead and perform that again, even though they failed. They listed as that dive being failed. They didn't fail the twisting dive. They did the wrong dive when they were supposed to be doing a 401. So they did a wrong dive in the wrong uh, order of their dive sheet. So there are some of those things that can certainly happen. Hopefully it happens before they go off the board. So they go off the board, they fail to dive somewhere, and then you got to fix the balance of the sheet. Um, it's a rarity it happens, but it does happen. So you want to make sure that you take care of it at the time. Um, so your some of the calls you have here, page 21, 22, again, reference in the book there, the zero point or the failed dives. What you're looking for, if you're getting assistance given while they're doing the dive, 
that's that dive has failed. If in your mind you see that that somebody's giving that diver help while they're performing a dive, you fail it. If they've done the wrong dive, you fail it. Okay. If a diver refused to do a dive, you fail it. Okay. Under and over twisting, that has to do with the rotation of the twisting dives. Point of contact is a reference of, of, of when they first contact the water, where are the shoulders? That'll determine have they twisted enough? Have they under twisted or are they over twisted? That'll determine whether a dive has failed or not. And it may be very close. Always give the benefit of the doubt to the diver. If you don't, you're not sure, don't fail it. But if your judges fail it, don't be offended because it could be that close and that's okay. Don't be offended if a judge decides he's going to fail that dive and you pretty convinced in your head that isn't failed, but that's okay. That's their prerogative. Okay. Don't worry about that. Okay. The other thing is, is that they can only do the dives we have listed in our book on, uh, on, on our MCDL uh, handbook on the front cover and the back cover that has all the dives we have and only the dives we're allowed in this league. If somebody's doing another dive that isn't listed, um, that's a that's that's an illegal dive in our league, and you have to ding them, and that's going to be failed with that particular dive. Your two point deduction or your box has to do with the illegal start or some kind of illegal infraction. Um, take off from the hurdle off of both feet. That's a no no. So it's your one foot. Um, the verbal intervention after they've started, they've established a start position, and then they get a verbal intervention. Say, hey, uh, you know. You know, Joey, you're, you're standing in the wrong position. You're doing a back dive. And then the coach gets them to correct their position and they move to another position after they started. Then they go and do their dive. You call a balk because uh, that's, that's an intervention that happened um, before they started their approach or whatever it may be. The dive hasn't started, but the, st that the starting position had been established. So you call a balk for that. Okay. Now, uh, your four point max, those are your deficient dives. Okay. What you look for, um, there is illegal tuck. Uh, you can't use a tuck in certain twists. We have those listed in the book. Um, there's only a handful of dives that allow it during a free position for twisting dives uh, where a tuck would be allowed to be incorporated. But in most cases, a tuck is illegal to be used in a twisting dive. But there are some dives that list that a tuck can only be used or a pike can only be used or a straight position can only be used. But you look at the chart, which I'll show you here in a moment, and you'll see which dives allow that. That's why I said, you know, when you're looking over dive sheets and, you, you know, you got some twisters in there, it's worth looking at to kind of get ahead and see what what it's supposed to look like and determine if you're, you, you've got to be looking for anything, any of the illegal activity. OK. Um, arms in the wrong position, uh, the four, four and a half point max you call if they're going feet first entry and their arms are up above the shoulders and their head, they're up here, they're in the wrong position. So you as a referee are going to call a deficient dive, four and a half point max, whatever the judges are, are scoring it, but they can't give any more than four and a half. Okay. And the other thing, uh, the two point max calls. Clearly, you got to be sure that that diver has performed a dive in the wrong position. And the other thing, we, you know, we talked about this with the judges, the sincere effort to come out of a, a, a tuck or a pike has to do with the fact that they probably didn't get enough height when they're doing their rotations and all and their flight through the air and they're about to hit the water and they haven't come out of that pike or that tuck. That's going to be your call if you think they made an effort to come out of that what we call the sincere effort, if you will. Anytime I see them contact the water and they haven't made a move to come out of that, that's not a sincere effort. But here's a thing of note that I will tell you. If it's that close and you feel like, well, maybe they were just about to try to come out of that, okay? You have a choice to call an unsatisfactory dive, two point max. But if you really think about that, if a diver has done the dive that badly and they're that close to the water and they've got it louse that far up you better hope the judges if you're not going to make that call the judges are going to make the appropriate call and give a really low score for that but don't feel bad if you have to make that call because if you feel like they haven't made the effort 
you go ahead and call it. Again, keeping in mind, you wanna to try to uh, give the benefit of the doubt to the diver, but if you don't see it, you gotta make that call, okay? Um, <clears throat> calling box, um, <clears throat> the first balk is a two point deduction from each score. The second balk, you fail the dive. They don't get to start and stop and then try it again, then start and stop again. That's two tries, <clears throat> two strikes you're out in this case. So you fail the dive, you don't have a choice. The fall starts, as I mentioned, that's a set. They start, they stop, they reset, and then they start, okay? That's where you're gonna have the balk. <clears throat> you don't call the balk exactly when it happens. You let the diver complete the dive, or if they didn't, they balked again after they did it, then you declare a fail dive. But you call the balk after the dive is completed. Okay, it's important you make sure you do that, okay? Um, giving assistance, as I mentioned, um, after they've already set, you know, the appropriate, again, appropriate time to call a balk is after the dive is completed, okay? The other thing is a balk that is a clear balk is if you see that a diver just starts bunny hopping to a hurdle and then bounces again, goes off the board. That technically is a balk because they didn't do a step before they did a hurdle, okay? So the hurdle, again, it's coming off of, they're doing one or two steps or three steps. They're gonna do off of one foot to a hurdle and then coming back down on the board with both feet on the end of the board, and then they, they start their flight through the air, okay? Anything else there has got a problem there. That's what you need to look for, okay? Um, the lineups, um, the lineups here for your call as a referee, okay? Um, what's defining a lineup very basic is that did a diver have any kind of push or a press or anything like that, whether they're doing a front lineup or a back lineup? The lineups are very simple, okay? They, they are, uh, you know, you know they're, they're a lesson to be learned here or a, a uh, you know, they're, they're trying to learn you know, how to have control on the board and so forth. Okay, so a lineup, they're standing on the end of the board. There is no running approach to a lineup. OK, whether it's a front lineup or a back lineup, they're lining up on the end of the board with no press. They're simply going to fall into the water. OK, it is a free position. If they have their arms up, that's fine. But they're falling into the water, but they need to keep themselves straight. That, that's that's what they're trying to. That, that's a that's a skill they're trying to learn there is to how straight they're, they're doing here. OK, they get a DD of a 1.0 on these things. It's a, just a little bit more than doing a jump, but um, it's a little harder to do because it's a matter of control and how they do it. But they do need to line up and they simply need to fall in and there's no press at all, okay? If they're giving kind of a press or they look like they're actually doing a dive, then they're not doing a lineup. Now that, and that's the same for a back. They need to be just falling into the water. They're a straight line like a pencil and they're falling into the water. Now. You're going to get some of those coaches that are going to try to play the roulette here, if you will. We ran into this when we started incorporating the lineup. And the reason the lineups came around is because there are a lot of these younger divers that simply weren't doing a press when they were doing a front dive or a back dive. So that's where the lineups come in. This is also where you as a referee come in. So you're going to have a coach that lists on a dive sheet, okay, uh, Jimmy's going to do a, a one-on-one front dive in a pike position, okay, or a straight position, which what a lot of them do, the new ones. They just try to get them to do a little press and go off. So they're listing as a one-on-one A. They put it on the paper. You as a referee see that, you know, Jimmy's in there, and he just kind of falls in the water. Well, you as a referee can declare, okay, he didn't do a dive. You're going to say, I'm declaring the diver did a lineup. You're going to instruct the meet secretary to change the dive sheet from a 101A to an 001D, meaning that the diver did a lineup. You're going to tell the judges, judges, you're going to score it as a lineup. And then the judges are going to give their scores. They're going to adjust not only uh, the, the change the dive, which is the only time they can change a dive without it being failed, change it to an 001D and change a DD from a 1.3 to a 1.0, and that can be the same thing for a back dive. 
because with the younger kids, their back dives are going to be 1.6. And you can change that. That's where you see a lot of that, where the coach is trying to get a little bit more DD when they know their kid's really not doing any kind of a press. But the judges should also be looking for the fact that if they're looking, for, if they're going to do something that has like a minimal press and you still want to leave it as a back dive, you hope that the judges are going to score that accordingly and not give it a great score. But still, if you see it that lined up as a back dive and they just basically fall in, again, you as a, as a referee can make that change and say, the diver did a lineup, change it to an 002D on the sheet, and we go from there. That's where you have the power to change that. But clearly, um, you need to make sure you're seeing that there is no press involved. So I know I'm, I'm sounds like I'm making a big deal of this, but really don't make it a big deal. OK, we have them there in place but just make sure if it's obvious, you make the call. If it's not so obvious, give the benefit of the doubt to the diver. That's what's important. OK, um, um, again, it's not a failed dive. The, you as a referee can go ahead and change that. That's fine. That's the only exception to the rule, as I mentioned there. OK. The referee, you as a referee, and the declare lineup was performed, instruct the judges accordingly, and then meet the secretary, as I just mentioned, and adjusting the DD, okay? Um, twisting dives, uh, the over and under twisting, as I mentioned, um, those are things to look for. Uh, don't pick on it too much. If it's too close to call, don't call it. As I like to say, eat your whistle. Let the, let the judges worry about making that call if it's that close, okay? Again, the criteria is where is your shoulder position, first contact with the water? Where are they at? Whether it's feet first or, or their hands first, okay? Where is your shoulder position with respect to what that dive, that dive is supposed to be, that twist? How many half twists is it supposed to be? And where are they supposed to be facing? They may be turning their head trying to get themselves faced that way, but maybe their shoulders haven't quite made it, but that's okay. Um, you got to make that call when you see it. Illegal use of the tuck, um, a lot of those free uh, dives, as I mentioned, these are the three that we have here that it's only allowed in a free position that's listed where they can use a tuck. Don't get too hung up on this, but when these dives come up, you want to look for them, okay? Just look at the sheets. It'll tell you all you need to know um, on the dives and the twisting dives and so forth. Okay, so after the meet, okay, <clears throat> I put in here about the official dual meet results sheet. I don't think we're even going to have these this year because speaking with Layla, our, our league president, I don't think we have those sheets. I think what you're going to end up doing, you're going to be reviewing what's basically a roster. They may have the official sheets out there. If they have copies of it, that's fine. Because normally you have a copy for everybody involved, one to go to the league, one to, to go to each team. So um you just need to make sure you work with the meet secretary after the meet, make sure all the tabulations and the scores are correct. And then somewhere on one of the sheets, you're going to sign off on it. It is preferred that we have that official dual meet results sheet, but being it's uh, this is coming off of COVID year, there's a, some of these things didn't get made and that's okay. That's just kind of the way it is. Sign in sheet, uh, you know, you sign the sheet that you have, whatever they provide you that way, you know, the meet's official when all, everything has been tabulated correctly. And you go from there, okay? Now, one thing I threw in here about you as a referee, okay? You're in charge of the meet, but whoever the pool manager is on duty is in charge of the pool. So if there's something weird happening with the weather or something else, and that, that pool manager, whoever the pool manager is on duty, not the actual pool manager, whoever's listed, who's not there. You need to know who's the person at the pool who's in charge. That's the manager on duty. Because that way, if you run into an issue with personnel that need to be removed or something like that, which, by the way, I've never had to do that, but you never know. You want to be prepared for that. When you get there, you want to know who's on, in charge, okay? So if that referee says, add ah, the pool related to weather, you listen to the pool manager, okay? That's not your call. That's not a referee call at all. That is strictly up to the pool. I just want to make that point of emphasis. Um, there are just some referees in the past that had, it felt like it was their call, like they have nothing to do with what's going on at the pool. Baloney. The pool manager makes that call related. They have the ultimate responsibility. 
for everybody who's in the water and in that pool. And if there's lightning and they tell you to get off the deck and get in shelter, you're going to do it. You make sure that everybody in that meet conforms to the rules, whatever the manager says. Okay, so let's go real quick. We're going to run through a few questions here. And we'll get you out of here. Hopefully, I haven't been boring you too much here, but I think we have just enough time to run through these. So, everybody with their microphones on, those who are still on the call here, please just jump on in here and you can help answer the questions. Okay. Let's... All right. So, a diver, first question a diver who becomes 11 on or after June 2nd shall compete in which age group? Nine ten. Nine ten. Here you go. Nine ten. Perfect. A dive executed which does not appear on the dive sheet is what? Fail dive. Fail dive. Failed. Failed. Absolutely. Okay. If a dive has been performed partially in a position other than announced, the who will declare a break in position? Who who makes that call? Referee. Yeah, yeah, us. I like that answer. That was great. <laughs> Good answer. Okay. That's, that's a collective answer right there. That's awesome. Okay. You're going to declare that break in position with a maximum score of what? Four and a half. Four and a half. Deficient, deficient dive is four and a half. Okay. An unsatisfactory dive is two. I just gave you the answer on something else coming. Okay. So if one or both arms are above the shoulders on a dive with a feet first entry, the jumps are excluded. The referee shall declare what? How many points maximum score? Two. If the arms are in the wrong position. Two. Two. Two? Two? Four and a half. Uh -huh. The arms. <laughs> it, it's, it's a deficient dive. It's not an unsatisfactory dive. Did I throw you all off there? Yes, it's all your fault. A little. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I got you then. Okay. Again, the arms got to be, you know, if they're up here, they're kind of like at the shoulders or below. You leave it for the judges. They should be calling that. But if the hands and the arms are up here, they're in the wrong place. That's where you come in. You can call it deficient. Four and a half point max. Okay. So next one, the referee declares what when a diver makes an obvious attempt to start a dive and then stops. Uh, uh, There's the, balk, the famous balk that I probably mentioned more times than I needed to, but oh well. Okay. A dive sheet that has been signed that has not been signed by the diver, the referee must what? If the diver didn't sign that sheet, what's what's going on? There's no there's no dive. Exclude. <laughs> if the diver never signed the sheet saying that those dives are, are valid, then what happens? You as a referee, what do you do? Gotcha, huh? You got it's before the before yep. the dives are performed, can you go ask the coach or, you know, see the meet representative and ask the coach to have somebody sign it? If you wish to do that. Yeah. The, here's the problem, though. If that event has started and you run into that, first of all, shame on the coach, shame on the diver, but more shame on the coach. Okay? Because, you know, somebody there or the rep or somebody needs to see that that thing's been signed because you could have this sheet circulating. You're always going to have somebody from the other team or something working at the table. If they come across that sheet and they don't see it's been signed. They could, they could say, Hey, wait a minute. We got a problem here because once the event started and those dive sheets aren't complete with the exception of some changes that can be made, you know, I would, I would, I would side on, I would get it, I would try to get it fixed as discreetly as possible. You don't want to tell a diver they can't dive because, you know, they didn't sign the sheet. But what it does come down to, um, if they didn't sign the sheet and they were competing for points, I think maybe the worst thing I would do is tell them we have to have to list you as exhibition. But try not to go there. I would say make a point. To just say, you know, oh, you know, well, get get the diver over there, get the coach and get it fixed and be done with. Okay. And don't let anybody make a big deal of it. But unfortunately, if it gets no, if it does get too far, you are going to have to end up dinging them. Could you mute, please? If you're talking otherwise. 
Okay, here we go. A dive sheet that has correct dive numbers, but no description. The referee must what? They've got the right dive numbers and probably even whatever position they are, but they don't have a description. What do you do? Let's go with the dive number. What's that? Go with the dive number. That's right. You go with the dive number. What's important here is that the dive number is what takes precedent over anything, not a description. You could have a completely screwed up description in there. It could be anything. You know, you have your recipe for tonight's dinner in there, whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as you have the right dive number, the referee will probably instruct to say, okay, it is this and that. Tell the announcer to announce it as such and maybe correct that. That's the only thing it can really fix. Because if it's wrong, it's wrong. The description could be written over whatever. It doesn't have to be completely accurate. Okay. Excessive rocking a crow hop on the diving board shall result in who deducting how many points? Judge. Who handles a crow hop? You or the judges? Judges. Yep, the judges. Okay. So how many points you got to hit them for? One to three. Okay, a half to two, somewhere. And that's what we have in the book. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Which age group of divers may use the 200 back jump as an optional dive? Who can use, who can use the, the back jump? Eight and under. Eight and under. Eight and under? Really? Who else? 12 and under. 12 and under? I got a better answer. How about anyone? Because anybody can use the 200 back jump. They can use it as an optional dive. That may be the second thing that an eight and under does. That's okay, because that'll be their second dive, and then they might opt to do yet another dive. It's only those eight numbers where they can actually do the back jump. They got to do a front dive or a front lineup, or if they want to do a back dive or a back lineup, but they could also do a 200 back jump. Those are the eight and unders. When you get nine and 10, that's where they have to do a front dive, back dive, or front lineup, back lineup, and then um, you can use a 200 back jump. Anybody can use the back jump, okay? Um, number 10, a, a required dive listed out of order can be corrected by who under the instruction of who if the dive has not yet been executed. We talked about that a moment ago. By so what the happens? Secretary? By the secretary. On the instruction of the referee. referee. So, yep, right. So you got the meet secretary under the direction of the referee to get that thing fixed. Okay. That's where you can fix the dive sheet if it hasn't gone off. But even if it has gone off again, that one dive that was supposed to be performed has now failed. And then they correct the balance of the sheet and then move on from there. May They may end up doing a, <coughs> a dive that they weren't supposed to do. They may have to do it again to get, to get their points for it. Okay, number 11, um, the who must ask who to determine if a dive may be repeated through no fault of the diver. So you get some weird noise or something weird happening. So who has to ask who if they wanna get that dive repeated? Who's involved? The diver has to ask the ref. Diver has to ask the referee, exactly. It's not the coach. Use a referee, don't even listen to the coach when it comes. Can we have that repeated? No, I'm not listening to you. You got to get it from the diver. It's very important because they may be coming off, they may come up, say, May I have it? it it's as diver asked, you're gonna you're you're likely gonna be compliant if you determined that that was an undue noise or distraction that happened at no fault of the diver. Okay. All right. Now a diver appears to hit the board during flight through the air, point deductions are determined by who? Is it you, the referee, or the judges? Judges. Right, it's gonna be the judges, okay? Um, we try not to make too big a deal. In the book, it, it basically lists that the judges will make a determination. Now, in other leagues, they call that, like, you know, in high school, if you hit the board, that's an unsatisfactory dive. And that's only gonna be two points. But in our league, it's a little bit different, but it's left up to the judges to determine. And hope to God that if a diver hits the board, hopefully they only brush the board and they didn't get hurt. Seriously. Um, that's the big thing. Um, 
If a diver fails to perform the dive announced, the who shall what the dive? Is a referee or going to what? Disqualify. Well, okay, we failed the dive. dive. Okay, because they didn't do the dive that was performed. Okay, fourteen. The who and the what shall review all scores tabulations immediately after each the meet one. Second referee. Referee. referee and the meet secretary there it is again got to make sure you go through and make sure all that stuff's taken care of okay if a diver and a and the opinion of the referee does not make that sincere effort to come out of that pike or tuck before beginning the entry of the dive meaning when they begin that and they've hit that water once they touch the water the referee shall de declare the dive what well, deficient is it deficient? Unsatisfactory. Unsatisfactory. And instruct the judges, what's the maximum score for an unsatisfactory dive? Two. Two points. Two. There you go. Okay. Some true or false, real quick. For a diver 12 and under, a very good dive should receive a maximum of five and a half. False. False. God, I hope it's false. They, they, they you know... <laughs> They do an excellent, they, you better hope they can throw it. You know, if they do a 10, give it to them, you know, tell the judges. That. Okay, a meet canceled during the 13-14 event. This is important, okay? For reasons of weather or whatever it may be, the meet shall start completely over at the eight and under event. What no, please, no, false. 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 When do you restart it? 13-14. You're in round, if you're in the middle of round two of the 13-14 event, where do you restart? Round two. Round two. Right. Beginning of round two. Not the beginning of the event, but the beginning of whatever round that didn't get completed. Okay. And that may be a, a round that you're just getting ready to start in. That's where you pick it up and go. Okay. The announcer shall read the judges' scores in the same chair order throughout each event. True. Yes. Absolutely. The referee will discuss and review MCDL rules with all judges immediately before each meet. True. True. Okay. True. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All divers must perform their required dives in the same order. False. True. Required yeah. dives. True. I'm giving you a hint. True. <laughs> yes. Optional dives can be done whatever they have listed on the sheet, but they got to go with whatever they have listed on the sheet. Okay. Um, in twisting dives, a diver is allowed to begin the twisting motion False. Before the feet leave the board, absolutely false. That is a failed dive. Okay. Okay, here's another one i throw at you. Okay. Any 13 and up diver may not perform dive 100 or 200 of the jumps in any championship meet. False. False. That's false. Right. Uh, it's not going to matter this year because I don't think we're going to have an all-star meet, but that's the one meet that they wouldn't be able to do it in. Um but otherwise, this year, if we're doing everything through divisionals, they can do a jump uh, in, uh, <coughs> at any time. Okay. Referee may immediately – oh, I love this one. See how many get this one right. How many – a referee may immediately remove any official coach or diver from the meet. Oh. True. How many say true? True. Think it's true or false? False. I oh. always love to throw this in here. It's actually false. you got to give what them a fair warning. Me? before you give them the boot. I, again, I will tell you, I've never had to throw anybody out of a meet and I hope I never do, but you never know. That's why I say, know who the pool manager is in case something weird happens, okay? A diver who has failed two dives may still be eligible for team points. False. I may say it's true. I think it depends on the age. How many think it's true? If you fail two dives, you're not eligible for team points at all. No. no matter who you are, that's false. Okay. It's leads. Okay. Protests may be made against the marks awarded by the judges. False. False. Never. You have their back and you make sure that 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 is, you know, you're gonna get some grieving people like, oh, what is that score? Whatever, you know, that you ignore them. Okay. The judges' scores are what they are, okay. Referee, you as a referee may pause and meet and consult the rule book before making any ruling decisions. Anytime during the meet, can you do it? 
Yes. Ooh. Absolutely. I hope. Yeah. Don't worry. Anytime you need to do that, you need to stop the meat and just kind of check to make sure nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I've done it plenty of times. It, it, it's all part of it and that's okay. Okay. A dive with a half twist. Okay. A dive of less than 90 degrees or more than 270 is a failed dive. True. True. Yep, it's failed. That's what we're talking about. If they didn't get enough, get past that 90, they're in trouble. And if they overshot it, they're in, they're in trouble as well. Okay. Divers can perform two optional dives from the same dive group. False. False. Right. False. They got to do those optional dives. They got to pick it from different, different groups there. Different dive groups. Okay. Yeah. Very important. Okay. They can't do a 103 and a 104. Ain't going to happen. This ain't high school. Okay. Um, so here, the meat, secret, the, the meat referee is not required to sign the official meat results sheet. False. Yeah. You need to do False. it. You need to sign something to show that that meat is official. Okay. Um, a hurdle is required for every forward dive with or without an approach. False. False. It's false. You don't need to have that hurdle in. I ain't doing it on a standing approach, you know, uh, not, not required. Okay. Um, that's why I say a forward dive with or without an approach. It could be standing on the end of the board. Okay. Um, a dive. Oh, here, here's another one. A diver may eliminate an optional dive, fail another dive, optional or required, and remain in competition for team points. So they failed a dive, but then they opted out of another one. So are they still eligible for team points? No. False. No. no, they're not. Because technically they failed two dives. Good, good. I'm glad you guys are all on the same page. Competing diver who fails two dives may not perform the balance of his or her dives <laughs> if there are still dives to perform. False. So they failed two dives. They're, they're out of the running for points. Can they still finish? Yes. Yes. I'm sure they can. As long as uh, yeah, they can, you know, it, you can't tell them no, they can't. They should go ahead and uh, let them finish. You want them to dive, but if they fail two dives and they're out of running for points, okay, let them finish up whatever they got. Okay, uh, any diver that is diving up may eliminate or opt out an optional dive and remain in the contest competing for team points. Oh. This is important. Yeah, it's false because you're diving up for your team to compete in that level. You're not allowed. You're not allowed to opt out of any of your dives. You got to do the whole balance of the sheet. Okay. Now, again, these things, I don't know if they're on the website or not. These are the help. The, the help. I put this together. This doesn't quite list all the dives on the second sheet, but it does tell you um, all those fun things you have. You can pull that off the website and there's a reference sheet you can use that'll help you along. Uh, that'll also be on the website. You should have that with you. This is great for you doing your pre-meet duties. Okay. Otherwise, y'all did good. You all passed. Good job. And thank you for putting up with me tonight. I know it's been a long night. It is just after 10 o'clock. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thanks so much. Steve, thank you. Get some calming uh, tea or something. Your voice has got to be pained right now. I need something, but I don't know what. I'll, thank I'll... you, Mr. Stark, for always being with us. <laughs> I'm trying. I have, I have to call you Mr. Stark because David is David Mazel. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. He's on mute. Dave, I appreciate you being here as always. Hey, Steve. So, just so you know, that uh, we do have the dual sheet, uh, dual result, uh, 